All right, guys and gals, welcome back. We're gonna do another paint and chat. Today we're gonna to be working on my Roman Legion, uh, getting into Hail Caesar. I could also use them for any other rule set that I find fit, and this is gonna be my control. <coughs> this was my first unit of 10. I'm doing the multi-basing. You can see here I found it's very similar to Luan. It's very smooth on the bottom. It's got a rougher textured top that I used to put my uh, flocking and my grass. So uh, this is where I'm going to go. No shield decals yet. I really haven't found a good resource here in the U.S. If you guys know of anyone that I can get stuff from here in the U.S., uh, post in the link below or comments below. Um, I try to avoid ordering out of the U.K. because I have to call my bank. I have to set up a situation where I can use my debit card and not get it blocked because if it's a processed outside of the US um, I get it I get my card blocked because they think it's a fraudulent purchase <laughs> so if you guys are running companies in the UK you really need to find US distributors and uh, um, uh, wholesalers over here you can sell to uh, so we can buy stuff direct here in the US Anyway, so we're going to get started. Um, we're going to do, do a complete uh, fig for you here today. Uh, I just randomly picked this guy out of the lineup. And uh, we're going to paint him from uh, start to finish uh, through several segments here. But uh, the way I like to do it, especially you guys just starting um, into the more gaming world and painting, is I like to use the, the glasses because they're heavier. Uh, they're clear so I can also see when they need the water needs change which I'll do fairly often um, my weapons of choice uh, for painting is going to be the army painter regiment brush I here have here today the detail and the this is my favorite I love this insane detail <laughs> right so we'll kind of keep him off to the side here a little bit and this is my two main go-to brushes and I'll tell you again, if you're just uh, not watching the other videos, I get these from Army Painter. It's got your dry brush, it's got your regiment, and it's got your detail brush. And I also um, keep a couple of extra detail brushes around. Uh, I find that I go through those pretty, pretty quick. They tend to hold up for about a month, depending how often you're painting. If you're painting every weekend, uh, like I do, um, I'm getting about a month, sometimes even two months, until they start to just uh, they start to separate and not really hold together well. Um, and then I'll save them over here in my um, my other containers that I keep brushes in um, for future, you know, little projects I might need a, a, a junk brush for. Okay, so we're gonna go in. I'm going to start with my my regiment brush. I'm hoping that this works better. I've switched over to my Canon camera here, guys, with a wide-angle lens, so I think I can get a little closer and get my uh, uh, so I can see better, and you can still get a good view of what's going on on the table here. Uh, I got to say, I just love this hobby. It's uh, here in Central Ohio. It is July 4th. Happy Independence Day, everybody, and. Um, it is blistering outside. Uh, with the heat index, it's almost 110 degrees outside today. No, no kidding. So the way I like to do it, guys, and you know, everyone has their own sense of style, which you are going to have to develop as a painter. Um, I like to go with the with the with the uh, armor. Uh, it seems really shiny now, but what I did was I went with a darker color first, which I'm going to use natural steel. Right, still a metallic color. It's darker, and then what I will do uh, towards the end, I actually did a little silver. Right, almost like a little bit of a dry brush effect, right at the very end, right on the you know the tops where the sun hits, so you get that nice effect of light to dark, light to dark, light to dark. And that's kind of a technique you can use 
Um, I don't have one handy here, but I just finished some British Calvary for Napoleonics. And I used this beautiful red color, and then I went back in and highlighted, uh, you know, where the sun hits, where the lighter, the, like towards the tops of the model. And in this case, I could even do that um, with a scarlet, which is a lighter red. So keep that in mind. You can really see um, the different effects. And of course, of course, we're going to be using a medium wash to a light brown wash. Um, to get these nice effects. Um, and this is a tabletop standard, guys. You can get this effect with a, not a lot of work if you're just using the right techniques. It was certainly not going, when you're doing mass battle infantry, guys, you're certainly not wanting to do something that's just going to take you, you know, hours and hours and hours uh, in the, with all of the layering and all of the rigmarole, let's say. Uh, you hear that little clicking when I shake my canister? Well, that's, you know, uh, sinkers that you'd use for fishing. Um, pewter sinkers or lead sinkers. Put them inside, pull the cap off. And that'll get you going. So let's dive right in here, guys. Fill up our paint there. Um, I'm not going to try to use a whole lot, and I use I'm going to use one drop of water. I'm going to come in. I'm going to mix that. I'm going to get it so it's not too thick. I find a lot of times these uh, Vallejo metallics can be a little on the thick side, so I like to use this technique. I will um, get it a little thinner so it flows better. It's easier to apply. So uh, we're going to go right in. We're going to dive right in. And we're going to come in on his helmet. That's one of my favorite things to paint. I mixed up too much paint for just one guy. What you do for your new guys, you mix up about that much. Don't go too crazy because it will start to dry up on you. And what I'll do is I'll run through several of these guys with the metallic. Doing all the metallic stuff. sure my head's not getting in the shot here guys and we'll hit all the armor and I want this paint to go away so I'll probably end up putting some of the excess especially like right along his belt line it's not really that hard guys miniature painting is just you know, figuring out a process, you know, step-by-step -step process, and then just working that process. I really find that these Warlord game miniatures, um, they're actually, they're pretty easy to paint. They really are. Get in there. top of his helmet make sure we get that good remember you can always come back in later and I'm going to go ahead and hit his uh, his uh, I forget what they call this weapon it's basically a spear speculum or something like that go easy on me guys I'm new to I'm new to ancients I'm still learning the weapons I'm still learning the tactics but this is an entire another era where you can uh, really go crazy. I'm going to do a whole lot with the shield. I really like to get the red on the shield. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do the border of the shield. And we'll come in and we'll cl be cleaning that up later when we do the red. 
So I guess what I'm trying to say is you don't have to get it perfect. I got my uh, TV off over here, my smart TV, but I highly recommend getting a smart TV or a laptop if you have one in your painting area. I usually play a movie uh, this weekend or with this, with this weekend. Uh, with the holiday, um, I am going in with uh, The Pacific. It's a mini series done by HBO, it's pretty good. Uh, the Pacific War, World War II. So yeah, definitely good to have on a good movie while you're painting or building models. And yeah, see I've got enough of this, uh, enough of this uh, metal. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do a couple figs because I don't want to waste this paint and we'll just... Uh, We'll just knock it out for you guys, especially you new guys just stumbling onto this. Just thinking about getting into uh, miniature gaming, which I obviously am going to highly encourage you to. It's a great hobby. Uh, it'll give you a artistic outlet. And also, if you're into history, this is also an outlet for... learning about history and actually uh, live in it a little bit of history. How they used to fight the battles, how they used to live, all that good stuff. So again, I'm going in with the middle of the shield. And if you screw up guys and you get it outside of the margins, so to speak, like I just did there, see that? On that middle of the shield, I'll hit that with with the red later. And worse comes to worse, I just come back in and uh, I'll touch it up at the very end, right before my wash uh, step, where I put on my wash. So please like, subscribe to my channel, guys. We're trying to get up above a thousand so I can monetize the channel. And I can actually use some of the proceeds from the channel to buy more model kits and keep bringing you more videos and keep improving the quality of my videos. I've just recently gotten into editing. I've got a better camera this year. I plan on getting you a better camera. See, he's got like that little area there in the front. That I need to get. When we come in, we'll do the sword touch-ups and stuff and all the detailing of the swords. Uh, here to later phase. And uh, just don't be afraid, guys. Just get in, do it. The more you do it, the better you get. Alles Anfang ist schwer. That's German for every beginning is difficult. All right, so don't be afraid to get involved in the hobby. I'm finding I've been into this hobby for years and every month uh, I learn more, I get into more, I get more interested in other projects, other things. This, this uh, hobby, uh, miniature wargaming, um, has even got me into doing model kits. Tanks, um, dioramas, I really like doing dioramas. So, we'll get this knocked out. Um, it being the 4th of July, we got a big cookout planned later for today with the fam my family. I'm looking forward to that.
you can see you just one two three you can see what I'm doing on other videos I try to show you you really got to form my hand is on top of the table and you see how I'm, I'm using this like a, I'm like a human tripod and that gives me the stability to get the paint within the margins that I'm get, trying to get them in just like so turn them around, twist them, turn them, that's why I like to use these caps it really helps you get a handle on the mini you don't always have to use caps or some people use popsicle sticks I mean just you know use your ingenuity and your um, imagination to <clears throat> do whatever works for you I personally uh, like the Gatorade caps they work really well uh, so this is what I kind of do I kind of just turn them around oh fumble and see if there's anything I'm missing like in this case the sword blade and again guys we're going to be coming in with a lighter shade of metallic to make them look even sh like even more shiny like they're just gleaming into the sun and um, we'll just crank them out like this now once we get done with these Romans we'll do a paint and chat with my Celts my Celtic warriors because this is part of the starter kit it comes with uh, some Roman, Roman legionnaires and some uh, Celtic warriors pretty cool if you can, of any kind of game system you can get into, it's nice to, if you can get a starter kit. It kind of gives you a little bit of everything. In this case, it even gives you the rule book. And uh, we'll just work our way through the pile here, guys. Get them done. Get her done. Get her done. I have to find out what that um, thing is there in the front that it hangs down in front of their loins uh, and find out what it, technically that is called I about used up all this paint and then we'll move on to the next color which is going to be red so we'll be doing like their uh, the uniform, the shield face, um, and I think the next uh, color I do after that is the flesh. So these go kind of quick. Uh, it's a nice thing about the ancients, as opposed to say painting Napoleonics, which is, as far as I'm concerned, you know, American Civil American Civil War, American uh, War of Independence. Uh, they're going to be a little tougher to paint. A little tougher to paint more colors uh, a little more detailing and these ancients they go like I say they go kind of quick all right guys we back for the next color okay now we're gonna go in with some red this is a good flat red Vallejo flat red palette here right in the middle see what the consistency is like sometimes I add water guys sometimes I don't it just depends on what my consistency is looking like and I'm probably gonna go in with my detail and see how that works for my shields oh, yeah, that's gonna be fine yeah that's a good consistency right there Turning up like that side and then bringing it back around. But you see, the trick to this is twisting and turning the mini. You get the angle that you need.
again I put too much paint on the palette for one mini so we'll probably bang a few of these out for you hope all your projects are going good it can be difficult in the summer there's a lot going on but uh, I also like to come down here and uh, get out of the heat in the summer and again, you know, it's nice and peaceful. It'd be a really peaceful hobby. You guys just getting into the hobby. So there's a shield, just bang, just like that. I'm going to come in and do his skirt, or I'm not sure if you guys want to comment below. I haven't researched what that garment is technically called by the Romans. Kind of doing downward strokes. Like so. I'm gonna come up and under just a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm going to come in, he's got a little piece of fabric right there by his shield. And again, right there by his shield. Or by his armor, I should say. A little piece of fabric right there. I guess you would call it his tunic. Like so. I hear my puppies upstairs. Maybe, maybe not. Alright, there's one guy down. And then, you know, I'll come back and I'll look at my test piece. It's the same kind of thing. But you can really see how I come in with what we just painted. And um, then how that wash really gets down in those nooks and crannies there. Um, you know, really giving you that nice uh, effect. And this is tabletop standard, guys. This is not, you know, we're not going for uh, competition here. This is a way of cranking out a lot of minis in mass. So we can get these things on the tabletop and start playing. So, I'm just, this time I'm going right around that metal trim line. I get any excess, I just draw it over, draw it over, see what I was doing there. You just got to develop your own techniques, but the, the main technique I can communicate to you guys, especially new painters, is you know, using your table as a support, um, you know, using some type of way of uh, attaching a miniature to something so you can really, uh, you're not just holding on to the base of the miniature. I've done that route. Um, it works. I mean, you can get it done. It's just not as, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's just not as efficient. And uh, again, you're not dropping the minis. I've rarely dropped these minis when I've gotten gone to the, the cap. And if you look at a lot of the top painters online, uh, this is what they're doing. And there's a reason. You know, I'm not the guy that came up with this. I'm just using it. So just like that, what a great color, man. I love this red, this just flat red is just a really rich color. Let's 
see him going down along the bottom of his armor. It's like uh, coloring by the numbers, guys. You just stay within your margins. A lot of this work has been done by the, um, the uh, modeler, the, the guy who sculpted the piece has sculpted little nooks and grooves where you can really help you keep your paint in the margins. Now see I got a really tough spot there guys. You can see right in this little nook. So again I'm just going to quietly and cautiously go in make contact with where I want the color and just place the color. And you don't have to get it perfect because you're going to be coming back in with a wash and then after the wash if you can still see some inconsistencies you can just come in with the color in this case uh, the metallic color or the red color and just do a touch up you know, just do a touch up so I'm going right along his belt line there right around his dagger then down and once you get a system down here you just start cranking them out you just you know red 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 and just go through the whole batch then the next color then the next color before you know it, you'll be done that's the most efficient way to do this it's actually one of the more fun ways to do it. And then I'm going to go under where his bottom tunic, we'll call it, and go up and around the legs before we do the flesh. Kind of look it over, turn it around. See another little piece here. I need to get some red. And a lot of times, especially if I'm doing like British line infantry, I will come back in with this, um, is this it? Yeah, it's a scarlet. You mix it up, it's a, it's a little lighter red, and that's good for doing your, uh, uh, your highlights for the, for the raised pieces of cloth. Uh, works really well. I've really had a lot of um, success using that technique with this flat red and then using the scarlet as a highlight color. Once that scarlet dries, um, it gives you a nice, it darkens and it gives you a nice contrast. So you guys out there that paint lots of line infantry British, like Napoleonics, uh, that was one of the techniques I used when I did my latest batch of British cavalry for Napoleonics. See, I got a little excess right there. Now I'm going to just draw it across so it doesn't beat up and it's nice and flat. See how I did that? And just uh, forming your tripod up against your table, and that helps keep your brush strokes nice and um, steady. Nice and steady. Like so. And down. Oh, almost messed up there. The biggest thing you gotta learn, guys, is you know, take your time. When you start trying to rush, you're not going to be happy with the result. You know, take your time. This is, there's no rush to get these done. You just have to be uh, persistent and um, uh, and steady. You know, I'll come down. I'll do an hour, hour and a half tops. 
then I'll take a break. I'll watch some of a movie I have on down here. I'll go over and work on a game that I'm working on. I'll go up and just walk around, go out on the front porch, just take a overall breather, give my eyes a rest. Again, there's no rush. Just keep at it. Keep chipping away. Keep chipping away. Before you know it, your army will be done. And you'll be ready to start your next army. And the more you do this, the better you're going to get. But buy good equipment, guys. Buy good brushes. This is a, these are great brushes for the money. The Red Sable. You know, some guys, oh, I don't like those. Uh, that's fine. Everybody's got their opinion. Right? I, I think these are great brushes. I've used them for years. See, now right there, I just did it. See, I got a little bit of red on his arm. That's okay. This is why I'm doing this step before I do the flesh. So when I come back and do the flesh tones, his arms and his legs and his face and his hands, I'll be able to cover that up. Comprende? Alright guys. Oh, there's three. There's three we just banged out. Alright guys, we're going to come back in with our next color, which is going to be Flash. And I'm going to choose one of my favorites, Tan Yellow. Shake him up. We're going to go in. Seems a little on the thick side. So I'm going to go with our dropper. One drop ought to be enough. <clears throat> I'll stir that up. And you don't want it too thick, you don't want it too thin. And you'll get used to the consistency and get it just right. Now, I'm going to go in with our detail. into the face. Oh, yeah, that's a good consistency. It really gets down in the nooks and the crannies. Nice. And his arms. Right up along where the garment meets the arm. Remember, we're going to be coming in with the brown wash at the end. Then after the wash dries, I'll go back over and see if there's any uh, areas I want to do highlights, which usually there are. Um, and I'm going to show you that process. So, I go in and get the legs, or this leg anyway. I think once you, uh, personally, once I start doing the flash, man, they really start to come alive. 
And again, I can't stress enough, guys. Just take your time. Don't try to rush it and do it sloppy. You know, if you got some touch-ups, you know, go back in, touch them up. Take the time to do it right because when you do, you're you're going to be much more happier with the result. And like I said, this is art. And when you do these figs, when you do them right, <clears throat> they really are like. Uh, they can become heirlooms. You know, your kids may want these someday. If you want to sell them, you don't find yourself playing with these particular figs anymore, they'll be worth something. Someone will want them. You know, you'll get your money back out of them at least. And then, then some. And if you paint them right. And if you're not a good painter, I wasn't a good painter. I'm still not up to where I would like to be. I mean, I look at these magazines and stuff, and I say to myself, Self, I want to be that good someday. I just keep ch chucking away at it, and I may not be an all-star painter ever, like you see in the magazines. Those guys spend hours and hours and hours highlighting and touching up and getting them just so they're perfect. That's what you don't see. They spend a lot of time layering and layering. Like they'll do three different colors just for the flesh. Now they're going to use a darker flesh tone. Then they'll come back in and highlight with a little lighter flesh tone, and then another lighter flesh tone on top of that. And that's what they you know, call layering. Uh, again, here, guys, this this is these are not for competition. These are tabletop standard. But I still want a good tabletop standard, right? I still want them... I don't want them to be janky. Alright. Very good. I think he's good to go. Grab another one. I got enough paint here. I could definitely do the four of these. Like a so. Actually, in the shop today, I'm actually watching a little Lord of the Rings. It depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Uh, another good flick I've watched lately is a recommended for you guys that like to uh, have something on while you're painting or you're uh, building your armies, whatever. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. It just popped into my head the other day and I it was on Amazon. So I grabbed it on my Amazon streaming. And uh, what a great flick, man. Great flick. Highly recommend. You used to have that ride at Disney World, but they took it out years ago. It was so cool. I can't believe they took it out. They must have had problems with it or something. Used to get in a little Nemo submarine. And they drive around this, like, lagoon. On, like, a track. All right, guys, we'll bring you back in for the next color. All right, now we're going to go in with the leather brown. A tiny bit. We're going to do a tiny bit. We're going to add some water. One drop. One drop. We're going to do the sandals. Ooh, excuse me. I'm going to do the sandals. And some of the strapping. Or like his scabbard for his sword. Right? Turn my baseball cap around here. I'm going to go in. Or leather brown. Oh, 
Alright. Like so. You can come in with a little lighter shade of brown if you want to. And um, do a highlight, like a, almost like a light dry brush if you wanted to. But honestly, since this is going to be down, you know, based with the grass, you know, these like these guys here. You know, I did the same thing on these. You really don't see the sandals that whole a whole lot. But obviously, you need to you do need to paint them. You can't leave them white. Like a sill. touch and come in and do that strap like, like so and you got a strap along the back there as you guys can see that little strap a little dot Not too much paint and shoot And that's what you end up with, that result. Now, I'm going to look around. I'm going to see if I can use this brown on anything else. And I'm thinking, you know, the back side of this shield, um, you know, I'm probably going to go in with that brown, what, I, what brown I have left over. But let's go through and let's... Uh, knock out a couple of these sandals you see that was one drop of paint and it's enough to do at least four figs so it's hard for me to do just one at a time uh, but I don't want to be too repetitious Riktiga. And like so, right along his toes. And that's where I love these caps, guys. You can really get a lot of good angles to get into the nooks and the crannies. strap like a thus like a dos all right guys that's what I'm doing I'm knocking out the sandals And in the balance of the the uh, leather brown that I have, I'm going to get my I'm going to use my regiment brush and uh, hit the backs of those shields. I think that'll be a ah. What am I doing? I think that'll be a good uh, good way of using up this leather brown. And uh, you're really not going to see the back of the shield, right? So that back there's a little little spaces and the little nooks and crannies I can get in there. And then once we do our our uh, our brown wash, everything will be good. All right, guys, be back for the next color. All right, we're going to be back. Final step. See, I went ahead and did uh, 
some uh, natural steel and some brass uh, just little touch-ups uh, some silver on the swords to make them more shiny and then uh, turn my hat around I keep bumping the camera all right so now we're gonna go in with the the brown the brown wash uh, you want to kind of see at the bottoms here there's like sediment and of course I have my sinker in there. You hear it rattling around. Plug for brush cleaner. Brush cleaner guys, you gotta use it. Good stuff. Keeps the uh, the brush condition too. So there we go. I'm gonna go in with that. And then uh, with my uh, dry brush. Small dry brush works really good. You can also use like, uh, if you go to Hobby Lobby, you can buy packages of these cheap brushes. These things are great for, for dry brushing, for applying washes, um, work really well. Uh, whatever you want to use, uh, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do fine. Now we're going to go in and we're going to kind of liberally apply this, get it in all the nooks and the crannies. This is one of my favorite steps, guys, because this is when the model, once this dries, this model is really going to come alive. This brings out all your details. Etc. Try to get it up in all the nooks and crannies. You know, up in that little recess in his helmet. And then as this dries, um, this is where you get a lot of your highlights. Right, so there's him. If I get too much in an area like the face, I just blow it. <laughs> Try to get some of that wash to come out. And you see like in the folds there of the garment. And we can come back in once this is dry. And we can do any highlights. We could do like a <laughs> we could do like a scarlet touch, uh, highlight on the shield. We can do the the high spots of the folds with a little bit of scarlet. And you can come back in with a dry brush of the silver um, and just touch up the tops of the armor. Give it just a little bit of shine. Right. Up in the legs, up underneath the shield. guy back of the shield good arms up underneath his helmet <sighs> what I did there I just blew on his face. And that's going to be good. Hey right, guys, clean the brush out. Like so. And here I'm going to demonstrate the brush cleaner. It's a lot like soap. I go into my clear. See, I got it up here where you guys might be able to see. This is my rinse. This is kind of my clear. So, dip him in the clear. Kind of rub it around, and you can see it gets like a, a white film on there. And then go in there with your fingers, kind of work it into the bristles. It really smells good too. 
smells a little bit like uh, Irish Spring. A wild Irish Spring. And I'll go back into my clear water and clean it out. Rinse it again. And it, like I said, it conditions the bristles too because this is a sable. Uh, so the bristles don't get brittle. Alright guys, we're going to let that dry. That's going to pretty much wrap it up. Once I get done with this, I'm just going to come back in and do a little highlighting. And uh, hope you guys had a uh, fun trip watching this. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.